Great, so good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, today's workshop is on plagiarism and um, it's adapted from the Rio Hondo College Library and ELEC Library. And my name is Maria, uh, Maria Roxana Cruz, or Roxana for short. Um, I am the new librarian here at Santa Monica College Library and I will be leading today's workshop. And just so you're aware, this workshop is being recorded. And um, so if you would prefer to keep your camera off and your audio off, um, it's up to you, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, also, I will be moderating the chat for questions. So if you have any questions, go ahead and send that over through chat and I'll be checking periodically throughout. If you prefer to send questions directly to me, um, you can do that by selecting the everyone drop down menu and just sending it to Roxana. Um, it's, it's up to you, whatever you feel more comfortable. Okay, so what is plagiarism? We hear um, plagiarism through our academic career, um, but let's take a second to look at what it is. So um, the Oxford Dictionary defines plagiarism as the practice of taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them off as one's own. And just so you're aware, plagiarism can be intentional, which means you de deliberately copy a, um, some, someone else's work or purchase a research paper written by someone else. Unintentional um, plagiarism is when you accidentally forgot to cite um, an idea or, or something that you paraphrased. Um, so there's a difference, but both can um, have consequences. So just be aware of that and be careful um, when you're writing your research papers. Okay, so we hear about plagiarism and um, how it could really affect your academic career and also your professional life. Um, and this is because, um, for, well, for many reasons, and we'll cover that soon, but um, we, the main reason is you want to maintain your academic integrity while you're a student and also a scholar. And this means um, that you have to be honest and responsible in your scholarship. Mm. Um, and uh, the University of Illinois um, Urbana-Champaign Library defines it as students of um, academic integrity means honesty and responsibility in scholarship. Students and faculty alike must obey rules of honest scholarship, which means that all academic work should result from an individual's own effort. Intellectual contributions from others must be consistently and responsibly acknowledged. Academic work completed in any other way is fraudulent. And we'll learn more about that and the Santa Monica College Honor Code. So let's go over some examples of plagiarism. It's kind of one of those things like, you know, when you see it, but there are ver like a variety of different types of um, plagiarism. So let's go over a few. So one would be presenting an entire text by someone else as your own work, directly copying a passage of text without citation, combining text and ideas from different sources without citation, reusing passages and ideas from your own previously submitted work. And this one um, is most commonly um, called self-plagiarism. So you can actually plagiarize your own work and it's something that you want to avoid and one way of doing that is not recycling research paper or work they view, submit it for another class and try to submit it for another. And then failing to give all the necessary information in your source, source citation. Um, this is just a few um, examples of plagiarism. There's so much, so many more, and I um, welcome you to check out the types of plagiarism um, by Rymo Streikberger. <laughs> Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, are there any questions um, so far about plagiarism and the types and the different examples of it? And you can give me a thumbs up if you don't have any questions or if you have a question, go ahead and enter that in the chat. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so let's test your knowledge. Um, which of the following is not an example of plagiarism? So I'm gonna read um, out the options and go ahead and send me your answer through chat. So one, changing a few words in a 
paragraph that someone else wrote, borrowing an exi existing idea and presenting it as a new idea, providing the full source for a quotation, translating others written work into another language without citation, none of the above. So which of the following is not an example of plagiarism? And go ahead and um, I'm gonna count to 10 in my head and go ahead and send me your answer through chat. Right, great job, everybody. Yes, number three is not plagiarism. All right, so we're at a um, good start here. Okay, so why should you avoid plagiarism and what are the possible consequences of, of committing plagiarism? So one, first of all, it's an ethical issue and it compromises your integrity and in which we refer back to specifically academic integrity if you're doing it in your um, academic career. It could ruin your reputation. Um, and not only that, but it also breaks the Santa Monica College Honor Code. The honor code dictates the kind of acceptable behavior and the code that we all should um, be held up to, both faculty and students. And if we violate the honor code, we can it could be it could lead to an automatic fail of a paper or a class, and you can even be expelled from school. Can you imagine that in your permanent record if you try to transfer to a four-year or if you try to start a career and they want to check your um, transcripts. So even though it's easy shortcut at the moment in the long term, it could be the biggest mistake ever. Um, it also takes credit or profit away from its original creator, which makes it illegal. You've all heard of copyright infringement. Um, and so it could lead to legal action and you can do jail time, get a fine or community service for doing that. So it really, it really isn't worth it. Take the extra time to give credit what credit is due. Okay, so how do we do that? By citing. And when do we cite our sources? Do cite your sources when? including paraphrased information or ideas from a book, article, film, or other outside sources in your research. Using a direct quotation from a person or a source, referencing graphs, charts, data, images from a source, using Creative Commons and public domain sources. So the Creative Commons um, is a nonprofit organization where um, people share work and they have flexible copyright um, permissions. So you can reuse or reconfigure something that someone else created, depending on the kind of Creative Commons license that it has. But just because someone gave you the permission to alter their creation idea or work, you should always give credit. Um, same goes for public domain, even though it's available for public use without a fee, um, you still have to give credit um, to those sources. And also rule of thumb, any information or ideas not of your own creation should be cited unless it's common knowledge. Any questions about that? If we're all okay, please give me a thumbs up or enter your question in the chat. Great, thank you. So please cite your sources. Um, citing involves um, using, acknowledging, and acknowledging borrowed ideas, creations, and works in a research paper. Signing is a way to give credit to the sources you're using in your research. It allows your reader to follow up on related works and sources that may interest them. It is the most important way to avoid plagiarism. So how do we cite our sources? By using a citation style guide or publication manual. So up here, I have some of the top three most commonly used um, citation styles, APA, which if um, many of these, APA, MLA, and then the Chicago manual. So these are citations uh, style guides that are used depending on your discipline. Um, but 
always, always double check with your professor what kind of citation style you should be using on your research paper because some may have a preference for either or, or even another one not listed up here because there are many out there. Um, MLA is the most commonly used for um, English literature and the humanities, APA, um, psychology, and other um, disciplines. And then the Chicago one is used often with history. Um, but as I mentioned, always, always double check with your professor what they're required. Okay, so the citation manuals go into in depth into how to cite your sources within the in-tax and in your works cited page. They also go more in depth um, about different types of sources, especially not the most commonly cited ones like audio files or PowerPoints or conference um, proceedings. So um, those are, are not commonly used, but you might run into them and you're like, how do I cite them? Check the manual. Other citation resources, um, I listed down up here for your reference. And um, one that I like is Sotero Bib, which is an open source um, online um, bibliography creator. And you can just enter the title um, or the link of a source and it'll help you create a citation for it and a bibliography. Purdue Owl, many of you might be familiar with this one, um, is, the, is a good uh, reference and you can, go to their website and check out uh, the different um, citation styles that they have, like MLA or APA. Um, another one, if you're still having a hard time figuring out how to navigate these websites or how to use these citation generators, you might wanna check with the Santa Monica College Writing and Humanities Tutoring Center for writing support. They can help you with your works cited page or your bibliography or any citation or writing um, questions you might have. Another great source is, of course, the Santa Monica College Library. Um, you can always ask the librarian for assistance, or you can check out some of our citation generators that are built into our databases. And I'm actually going to demo that real quick, just so you know um, how to use that. So let me escape here, and let me take you to the library um, homepage. And so here on our page, can we all see it? Thumbs up if we can see it. We're good, great. So here you'll see some buttons. And before I show you the citation generator, I also wanna show you um, a guide that will help you for reference. And if you click on research guides here, guides, sorry, and we go into introduction to research, here we have even a section about academic integrity and plagiarism. If you wanna go back and reference that and learn a little bit more, follow some of these links, um, learn a little more about the honor code. We also have the most common citation styles like APA and MLA. And the workshop link recording will be uploaded there. We also have sample citations. So if you want a quick reference, you can see how books are um, formatted or ebooks. You can have a couple examples for websites, personal interviews, and it shows you how to format those citations for your works cited page. So that's a quick reference. If you just like, I just need to know how to format this real quick. Um, you can always check out our research guides. And let's go back to the library. As I mentioned earlier, we have citation generators built in in our databases and even our one search bar. Let me do this the old fashioned way because it looks like he's having a hard time returning home. So let's say I was looking up books on Steinbeck. Um, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this book looks really great. And I'm, um, Instead of copy and pasting all of this and going into my works cited page and formatting it myself, there is a shortcut to doing that and it can help save you time. So if you click on those three dots that I just clicked on, you'll see here options. And if you click on citation, it formats it for you. 
we have MLA 7th edition, APA, and MLA 8th edition is here. The 9th edition hasn't been added yet, but it will be soon. And all you have to do is copy citation clipboard and then paste that onto your Works Cited page. Um, however, these citation generators are not always perfect. Um, sometimes they make mistakes. So you still wanna go through it and make sure that it's formatted correctly. Um, because, you know, as much as, as far as technology is gone, it's not perfect. Um, but that's one way of kind of quick, easy way to get your citation started. Okay, let's go back to our presentation. And of course, I'm going back to the beginning. Give me a second. Apologies for that. Okay, any questions about these um, citation resources? Um, you're welcome to unmute yourself or enter your question in the chat. Yeah, yeah hi. Um, hi, can I also cite articles as well? Yeah, you can. Um, if you um, find an article on there and on the one search bar or in our databases, you can totally um, cite that uh, the same way. You would just click on those three dots or anywhere where it says citation, and then it will create it for you. I didn't demonstrate one in the database, but I can do one at the end if we still have time. Um, would that work for you? Thumbs up, it. That's, that'd be great. That'd be great. Okay, great. Um, all right, so I'll do that. Um, let's see. Thank you for that. Oh, that's a good question. Make sure to include that next time. Alrighty, so citing is two sides to the same coin. And what I mean by that is not only do you have to cite your sources in your work cited, but you also have to cite them within your text. And so this helps your readers um, find the full citation to the sources and follow up on them if they wanna check them out for, for further reading. Um, so remember, not only do we have to have a works cited, but also an in-text citation to link those together. Um, see, So let's do a quick knowledge check based on what we cover so far of what plagiarism is and upholding academic integrity and then different examples of plagiarism. I wanna see if we, uh, what we know so far now that we've covered that so far. Okay, so scenario one, your cousin gives you their old essays. You turn in one of their essays as you old. Is this plagiarism? You can text yes or no in the chat. Great, thank you for your answers. And uh, let's see. Yes, it's plagiarism, correct. All right, so scenario two. You summarize an article you found on latimes.com in your own words and do not mention the original author. Is this plagiarism? And let's see, we got some yes. Yes. Let's see. Yes, great. Scenario three. You post a picture you found on National Geographic to your personal Instagram feed and do not mention National Geographic. Is this plagiarism? Yes, exactly. Even if you're um, posting stuff on your Instagram, on your Facebook, Twitter, posting stuff that you didn't create, personally create and not citing it is plagiarism. And if National Geographic finds out that you used your image without proper attribution, you could get sued for that. So, yes, it's plagiarism. Let me see. If it has a logo, that's actually a really good question. I would still rule of thumb, still include the link and the site um, and the source from where you got it from. But yeah, having the logo might save you a bit, but just I would err in the side of caution and still include. National, I got this picture from National Geographic. Um, here's the link to the article or the image if you wanted to um, use that on your page. Thank you, Pedro, that's a good question. Oops, 
Ah, so we know the question. <laughs> we know the answer to this one. But scenario four, you quote an author and give the page number and author's name. I saw. No, it's not plagiarism because we're giving credit to um, the source that we're using. <laughs> okay, so scenario five, you post a graph on your PowerPoint and give the original source. Is this plagiarism? No, correct. A great bunch. No, it's not plagiarism. Um, it's important even in your graph, any graph, if you didn't create it, um, always, always give credit um, for the original source. Okay, so to sum it up, best practices. Um, plan your paper, always give yourself enough time when doing your research um, because questions will arise and you wanna be able to consult with your instructor, um, be able to take notes, on what you're researching and if any questions come up, like what kind of citation style or um, what uh, maybe narrowing your focus in your research, um, you wanna have enough time for that. So plan for your paper and also always, always, always analyze and evaluate your sources. Check if they're credible, um, if they're appropriate for your research topic. Um, also when writing your paper, Give yourself enough time to cite um, and format mm. the citations properly so that you can prevent making the mistake of committing plagiarism intentionally or unintentionally. Um, and also to have a check. If you have any questions about your citation formatting, you could always ask a librarian or you can always um, contact the writing center. Okay, so. Our librarians are available um, in person in the library Monday through Thursday, nine to six, or you can contact us using the Ask a Librarian button on our library homepage there. Um, you can chat with an actual librarian, a human librarian 24 seven and ask for even citation formatting questions. Um, we're always happy to help. And if we don't know the answer, we can find the answer for you. And then um, let's see. That's the code for today. It's pumpkin spice. And since we have some extra time, I'm going to demonstrate how to uh, use the citation generator for an article. Uh, so bear with me. Let me just get this real quick. Go back to the libraries. So if you go to databases on the library's homepage, let's say I want to use Academic Search Complete. And I am researching plagiarism and college students. Search. And I only wanted to look at scholarly peer review journal articles. Let's say nurture on Wikipedia can honor code foster better student writers. Hmm, maybe this is an article that I really like and I want to use for my research paper. I would click on the title like I did and I'll take you to this page where it gives you more information on it, but like a short summary, which is the abstract here. Um, it gives you additional terms that you can use um, for your search. If you if these um, keywords weren't, weren't working out for you, you can always switch them out for these subject terms and it would improve your chances of um, getting better results. But if you look on the right, you'll see these tools listed on the side. So as you can see here, it says site. You would click that and then you would go through the list. We have different, um, it gives you different styles, citation styles. So let's say maybe you were doing APA 7 edition. Here is the citation for that in that style. If you wanted MLA 8th edition, here is the citation formatted under MLA um, 8th edition. And you would just highlight that, copy and paste onto, onto your Works Cited page, and also go back and go through it and make sure that it's properly formatted. Because as I mentioned, these citation generators are not perfect, and sometimes they make mistakes. Um, do you all have any questions? Um, 
about today's presentation about plagiarism or anything. Um, this is your time for questions if you like. Oops, let's see this. I have no idea why it keeps taking me to the front page. Um, questions. Okay, do I have a hand raise? Oh, I do. Okay, yes. Hi, Bren. What is your question? Would you like to? Yeah. Hi. Thank you. This was an excellent workshop. Um, I did want to sort of mention something about citation because we tend to think that there's one perfect way to do it, but my recommendation is always to do what your teacher tells you. I know that sounds weird, but some teachers use like handbooks, like the hacker handbook, and it's a little bit different than what the online writing labs or the databases give you. So just follow the format that they give you because sometimes it's not what we would consider right as librarians, but it's what your teacher's looking for. Um, and there is that flexibility. So, you know, please follow any examples or templates that your teacher gives you um, because you want to do what they're asking you to do. So yeah, a question, you. just sort of a thing. <laughs> no, yeah, thank you, Brent. You're right. Some professors, uh, I, like you mentioned, might use a different formatting, which might be a combination of a few. And that's their preference, but um, yeah. So always, always double check with your professor and give yourself enough time to, you know, get an answer back from them and enough time to fix your paper if you need to. Any other questions today? Um, and then again, if you want to um, enter your question in the chat, you can do that too, or you can, um, and if you feel more comfortable, oh, what is the honor code? Thank you, Petra. The honor code is um, a list of how do I say a list of ethics that we um, that Santa Monica College wants our students and faculty to live up to. So a list of rules, like rules to live by, right? Um, it was created by the Honor Council, um, which is a, a community group here in Santa Monica, and it lists out what our expectations are of you. Oh, thank you, Brand. Brand has entered the link on there, and let's go view that. So this is the honor code here. And I guess you can think about it as your academic rules to live by and the expectations that the college has for you as a student here at SMC. And so um, going quickly through the honor code principles, they want um, everybody to be honest, you know, have integrity, be socially responsible, respectful and civil. Um, there's also, here list of upholding academic integrity. Um, and it breaks it down for you, what they're looking for and what they expect to you, of, of you as a student. Here are tips too. Uh, and I would recommend reading that through as, as a student here at SMC, you want to make sure that you're living by the code set out for you by the college so that um, you, know, you don't get in trouble. Um, any other questions? One note on the honor code, mm -hmm. a lot of times instructors will have some sort of an assignment in their in your class or um, something on the syllabus about the honor code that you have to sign saying that you have read it and agreed to abide by it. So it's actually a pretty big deal for students. Yeah, it almost seems like it's legally binding <laughs> if they were expecting you. Morally binding at least. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Bren. Any other questions? Oh, yes, Natalie. I know this is the, like, kind of with the topic that we we're talking about today. But when would you use the Chicago, like, manuals formatting? Like, what type of, like, area would you use that for? Um, if I'm correct, it's usually with um, history, but you want to use it only if your professor asks you to use the Chicago style for, um, formatting. Um, Chicago style manual, um, but usually it's used in history. Um, I want to say art history might use it once in a while, but it really depends on your professor's preference. And you might be using these most commonly in graduate school, depending on your discipline. They would be more strict about following exactly uh, what the manual stipulates. I was just curious because I've never I've never been assigned through that method. Usually it's like a APA or MLA. I just was curious. When oh yeah, no, Angelie. I mean, yeah, 
when you get to grad school, you all like for librarians in graduate school, we were expected to use APA. So it was really interesting because I used MLA for like most of my academic career. And then to go to graduate school and be like, APA, learn this new formatting style. I'm just like, oh, okay. And it's slightly different. It's similar, but slightly different. Things are arranged a little bit differently uh, depending on the style. But um, I do, oh, Bren added this. Thank you so much, Bren. Um, so SMC usually uses APA and MLA, but I've seen history, art history, even English use Chicago. Okay, so there might be times where you might run into that. And if you have any questions about it, I, I know it can be really um, um, intimidating to use a new um, style, especially if you haven't seen it before, used it before. Um, you can always reach us at the library or at the writing center. Great, any other questions? Thoughts, comments? <laughs> How do we feel about plagiarism? Do we feel more comfortable um, going forward? Yeah, thank you, Natalie. Thumbs up for Natalie. All right, thank you, Bren. Um, alrighty, so I'm gonna finish up today. Uh, just to go back, we, and I wish there was a quicker way to go to the end. Let me see this. Oh, there it is. Huh. Okay. So remember the co is pumpkin spice in case your professor asks you for the co for extra credit um, because it is fall and it is pumpkin spice season. And thank you everybody for being here today. And remember, if you have any questions, please reach us here at the library or come in and visit us. We're open Monday through Thursday, nine to six. All right, bye everybody. I'm gonna stop the recording. <laughs>